Well, good morning, morning everyone here from Flying with Mike. Hope you've had a great uh, start to your weekend. Uh, we had a little boo-boo there in uh, figuring out the Zulu time for today's departure. Obviously, it's not going to be 18Z, because it won't be 18Z for at least another two and a half, or an hour and a half. So, uh, we are going to set up here in Boston Logan uh, with our Delta Sparks 747-400 with X-Plane. Head over to the UK today uh, via PazCon. We're going to Gatwick. So, let's, uh, basically, let's get up in that cockpit and let's... Uh, get into what our flight's going to entail today. Uh, bringing Sim Toolkit over for that. Currently you see the flight plan. You see it also in the chat room, so I'm not gonna go over it much. Uh, this was a NAT track a couple of days ago. Um, and it appears uh, a flight yesterday out of Boston to Heathrow. There are no flights right now from Boston to Gatwick. <clears throat> went on this route so we took it uh we said what the heck it looks like a good route we're gonna run it so uh but basically it involves using the lbsta six departure up to alex then we get on the uh no november 379 alpha to all right a uh, couple of tra uh, fixes across the north atlantic then to mallet gisty slaney uniformly Manine. Most of you that fly in the UK or fly transatlantic, they know this on the back of their hand. Slaney, Stu, and then Bedick is a new one, but that sets us up for our arrivals coming in from the west. As you can see also on the uh, chat room and on the screen, we have the current weather up as of 1554 Zulu. Uh, you know, sometimes... Oh, there it is. I was going to say, I know Sim Toolkit has to have it somewhere. Uh, so that is running about a half hour ago. So the winds are variable now here in uh, Boston. 10-mile visibility, a few clouds of 500 or 5,000. Uh, 1,500 also a few clouds. All in all, a beautiful day here in Boston. Uh, temperature 14 degrees Celsius, dew point where they normally sit in the wintertime, minus 1. And, uh, however, it is spring pushing towards summer, so uh, good to see that at least. And the altimeter 3010. <clears throat> when we get across the pond, uh, right now the forecast is 240 at 13. They're variable from 210 to 270, and pretty much a beautiful day into, into or I should say, beautiful run into London this evening. So, all in all, the weather-wise looks good. Uh, real quick facts about Boston. We're 19 feet above sea level. We are going to use runway 33. I know we got a variable runway, so that runway right behind me is looking inviting. But for now, we're going to go with 33, unless told otherwise. Heading of 330 on the runway, and it's 10,083 feet long. 
and just so you can stick it in the back of your head, the current flight plan plan of the day is runway 26 left into Gatwick. Folks, we got six hours of flying ahead of us, so that could change. So right now, be flexible. Try to be like a pretzel. I try and I break bones, but, you know, try not to break bones. But uh, their elevation is 203 feet above sea level. The runway heading is 258, and you can see the ILS information. All right, so on the right side of this ledger, from and now this is provided by SimBrief. It, they're, by giving them your user ID, it pulls it right into Sim Toolkit. <clears throat> um, you can get the basics. We're going to be flying about 2,500 miles. It's actually 2,457 air miles. Uh, initial climb, and we are not intended to fly any step climbs. 35,000. And I don't know if that's something within Sim Toolkit or Sim Brief or what. Usually we'll step up to at least 37, and if we're lucky, 30, 39. Uh, could be because of our loadout. And then let's move to that because the next section down is our fuel. I'm going to pull that up here so you can see that at the same time. Um, now, what we're going to load in is a little different than what you see on there. That's because of the Sparks aircraft. But first off and foremost, the loadout for today, total payload, and we are in kilograms. I know you folks in Europe and Canada, well, pretty much everywhere but the United States, jumping for joy that we're in kilograms. I hate kilograms. It's was one of one or two of my worst runs as a truck driver involved kilograms. Um, I just can't get my head wrapped around it. Sorry, folks. Um, <clears throat> but uh, And I know you all say the same thing about pounds. So, But payload, 38,168 kilograms. Now, we're, we've got 270 people on board. And what we've done is broke that down um, into... If I can get this to pull up on another screen, unfortunately, I can't put it in front of you. We've got 258 adults, eight children, and uh, four infants. Hang on a second. Uh, something doesn't seem right. Something's just checking something here real quick on the plane. Something's not seeming right in what I just said, so hang on a second. Okay, yeah. I'm thinking here's where flight simming versus real world flying is really plays on your mind. I'm thinking I'm flying a Zebo type aircraft, not the GitHub 747. Uh, Zebo, you can break it down by male, female, child. Not, not so in this aircraft. You can only give it numbers. So we got 270 people on board. The breakdown, if it would have been like that, is uh, 258 adults, 8 children, 4 infants. So, and the infants, kind of to a lot of people, is important. That one's the one because they, they, they have the hardest time taking care of themselves because they need mom or dad taking care of them. So that's... Why the delineation? And they could be sitting on their lap. That's another story for another day. Why I don't like that. And since I've never clicked it, what the heck is this? Oh, never seen this before. Interesting. I'll have to remember that on future flights. Um, cool. All right, let me close that up. I don't even know if you all saw it. I said close. Thank you. All right, so fuel. Now, we're showing we're going to load 63,745 kilograms into the plane. That's what we would load if this aircraft was capable of decimal uh, taking, uh, for instance, in this case, 63.7, putting that in and loading it. It is not. So we have to round up. We're going to go up to 64. I am not rounding down and taking a chance of running out of fuel. 
All right, sorry about that, folks. So, uh, for a reserve on this flight, we're going to have a 12... Uh, point two. Let me write that down so I don't have to stutter for it. Okay. And uh, so we're going to be putting 64.0 really is what it's going to be. Kilograms. Thousand kilograms in the plane. You'll see what I mean here when we get to that after the brief. Uh, finally, rounding out this brief, uh, make sure I didn't miss it. Again, our routing, we are planning an alternate of uh, Paris, France, runway 27 left. Uh, it's a 211 mile run, hence a little bit of why we have a little heavier fuel load. And this gives you the information. Again, there's our flight plan. And you'll have to give me a little slack. I came off a 24-hour shift last night. A little on the groggy side, so bear with me as we get rolling here. Um, and finally, here is what we're planning. Now, SimBrief is estimating it will take us 500 or 5 hours, 53 minutes. We're scheduled for 6 hours, 15 minutes. So let me check in. I think we just got our squawk code. And we did. Okay, so we're going to be squawking three, four, four, five, and CTAF. Stand by. I have that on another screen. 128, eight. We'll explain those in a moment. Uh, just wanted to make sure I had those. All right. And then finally rounding this out is our weights. There's our passengers. Now we do have uh, 10,000 pounds of cargo on board, bringing us up to that 38,000, roughly uh, 168 kilograms rounded up to decimal two. Uh, there's our zero fuel weight and so forth. So that folks wraps us up. Let's take a look though real quick at what kind of significant weather along our flight. Now this is the first one. So uh, we've got a jet stream cutting pretty much around us and then with us as we uh, uh, take on this route. We also have I am not familiar with this symbol. Isolated thunderstorms? I'm not sure what this is from 18,000 up. So we'll be contending with that. Let's go to chart two. Oh, we're still on chart one. Oh, it's turbulence. Probably moderate, uh, uh, light to moderate turbulence from 18,000 up. And then our jet stream cuts really helps us. We'll be helping us out halfway across the ocean. Uh, and then we'll run into another batch from 25,000. Oh, pretty much on up from light to moderate. Uh, also probably embedded uh, cumuli in here. Not sure why we got two of these, but anyway. Um, three of them, wow. We had different flight levels. We are, okay, so. You can really see how this jet's going to be really pushing us here once we get out there. All right, and then finally, we're going to be at 35, which I think is this chart. Yeah, 34. You can kind of see, um, here's our route. This is the current NAT track. At, well, will be the NAT track tonight. Uh, and it's one, Sulu. Uh, but you can kind of get a feel for the winds we're going to be packing on here so we're gonna that's where we're getting a pretty good fly time from so but anyway folks that wraps up the uh this portion of the pre-brief um let's hop into the cockpit do a preliminary acceptance of it and then uh, roll on so hang on a second so i can do this right next time there we go 
All right, so we're back in the cockpit. We're going to do the preliminary checks. Basically, this is what a flight crew would do when they come out to the plane, be it cold and dark or uh, being handed off to them, if you will. So we're going to make sure the circuit breakers are in, the emergency equipment's checked, and then we're going to head up to the upper panel to make sure the utilities left and right are on, the battery switch is on, the uh, standby power is in auto, the hydraulic demand pumps, they're all off. Um, I, at this time, will turn on the engine pumps. They're going to say on and press, but they're not doing anything until the engines come on. Or APU. <clears throat> Alternative gear. Okay, so we'll come down to this. I've kind of changed up how things are going to look. Uh, trying to help so you all can see better what we're doing. Um... So we're at the alternative uh, flap and gears. So here's your alternative gear, extensions here, and flaps. Make sure they're in the off position. Landing gear lever, always make sure this is down. I have come into this plane a couple times and it was up. So be mindful of that. Uh, flap lever, okay, now that's just a little ways down. Make sure it's all the way up in the zero position and more importantly is not showing in here uh, and if it is make sure it says zero speed brakes at this time make sure they're fully uh, down and the down detent because you lift up and that's what's arming them uh, da, 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 da. parking brake parking brake is right at the bottom of the throttles here they are set ground power is established and on and I'll show you how to do that at the same time. Uh, a couple of other things I want to, again, put in front of you. Back up to the top oxygen. Well, oxygen masks are not modeled here, so we can't show that. Emergency lights, that's this switch right here. Make sure the guard's down and closed. Uh, windshield wipers right here and here are off. Navigation lights on. And I always turn the logo light on. I don't care if it's day or night. I advertise, in this case, for Delta. And then bus ties. That's these uh, row of switches. And the gen, this row. I do this at the very beginning. When I power up on the uh, ground unit, that way power immediately goes to the plane. Checklist does it here. Just make sure they say auto for the tie on and it'll say on lit up off below it off will go away when the engine comes alive and that folks is the preliminary so that gives you everything so far uh, that the aircraft is in a good setup now we go into the pre-flight and this is when we start getting her prepped for this flight and first thing we do is the IRS. Make sure the left, right, and center, we go to once to align, or with the arrow, like you see on the screen, to align and then nav. It's two left clicks. Then I do the right, align nav, center, align nav. EEC switches, or electric engine controls, that is your uh, uh, Control the engines, make sure they're on and normal. Uh, fire protection check, we can do again. I've already done it. Lights up for uh, T handles that, and it should put it on your display. Doesn't stay on long enough. Interrupt switch on. Passenger's oxygen, that is this switch here, is in the normal. Flight deck lights are set to your liking, so you can do that here. This is the dome, so that lights it all up, but this is individually. Then you can come down here, set your PFDs for how you want right here, as well as right here. And I don't think we, and then, no, there isn't any down on the bottom. I'm, again, sorry, 737 day came back. All right, so the flight deck lights are set. We are going to now go down to the bottom and uh, stape trims, make sure they're auto, and that is the guards are down. Um, 
and then we would go to the FMC and basically set up our route. I have already gone and done that. But what you do is you come in here, it'll look like this. So you click FMC, pilot route list. If you have one, pick it, uh, or you can go, let me, uh, well, or you can select the other one, it'll pull it up, it'll load in. I'm careful now because there are some databases I'm finding out there that aren't, like O'Hare wasn't loading up, Singapore, uh, several Alaskan airports. I've run into another one and I can't think of it off the But anyway, they're not in there. So I do it manually, to, you know, just to get the frustration out. Click Int Ref. And that takes you to the Int Ref and standby. We'll be right back. All right, folks, I do apologize for that little break there. Uh, my wife's uh, on vacation, and she just uh, gave me a call. And, you know, since she's the CEO of Flying with Mike, I have to kind of take the call. So I do apologize for it. And we'll get back to where we were. We're going to do a quick recap, and then we'll get right into, you know, pre-flight and getting this bird airborne. Um, so what we did is once... Um, the uh, IRS align you come here you'll be in this menu now um, while they're aligning just be mindful your your clock will be right here seven minutes but you can come down into here click PAX cargo load your plane uh, with your passengers or cargo uh, passengers and cargo on a passenger version if you're flying to cargo versions you can do it on this page all right so then you'll come back to ground handle now you're back to whoop, wait a minute oh and then come up to ground service this is where you get your ground power type in your number ours again is 64 I'm gonna go ahead and request ground services so that way we're filling up now And what's happening is service the ground on the way. The services are on the way. It's a couple of catering trucks, uh, the fuel truck, and uh, belt loaders. So, but anyway, you're going to come back, hit enter it um, on the uh, menu, hit FMC. Sorry, I, I move too fast sometimes. Here's where you would get your company routes. Here's where you get your pilot list. I just click pilot list and then I do an int ref. Once you click ident, now it'll look familiar to a lot of people uh, that fly PMDG, iFly, or any of the others that Microsoft Sims have. Uh, so you just uh, look over, make sure your data is up to date, click position initialization, type in the IKO, KBOS in this case for Boston. Uh, you'll have boxes down here to fill in. All you have to do is click this line select key under the GPS. Then click it here, and that'll put it right in there, and you're ready to go. Then you just type in origin and destination. For your departure airports, all you do or your departure, click DEPARR. Then you click DEP. That'll be your Boston. Then you select your runway. We're doing 3-3 three, three left. Then your star. Click Execute. F plan brings you right back to where you were with the via and the two put in. And then you just start plugging away. Now, we're going to take a quick look outside. There's the fuel truck. See what's on this side of the aircraft. There's one of the, uh, sometimes two of them show up. Um, and one will go here, one will go there. He, if he's the only one, he'll back out and come around. There will be a belt loader here soon, an air cart or generator, one of the two. And I think that's about it. Again, it's pretty much eye candy, you know, you know neat little stuff that, oh, here comes the second truck in. And unfortunately... The only doors that work on the plane is door 1L, which is the normal 
one of the two normal ways into plane through first class um, and the upper one. So what you see open on this side, that is the only door minus this one that can be opened. Once the catering is done and the fueling is done, which probably, by the way, it is done, they'll drive away. Um, it's not like Zebo where they, boop, they're in, boop, they're out. You don't even get caterers or stuff like that. So it's a neat little, like I said, eye candy thing. So anyway, let's hop back in. Let me uh, get us back to where I want us to be here. And let me see. Yeah. And then once they're done, we'll be at 63.9. I'm fine with that because the other program I use for flight planning had us at, uh, whoop, wrong page, sorry, uh, 63,792. So I'm okay that we're just shy. Now, we're going to continue the FMC. And again, Please, uh, uh, my apologies for that lengthy delay, five, ten minute delay with talking with my wife. Uh, but we'll try to keep that to a minimum until we're airborne. All right, so your basics are in. Again, next page takes you through it here. If you want to do legs, you can take it through this way, making sure there's no discontinuities. But from the next step is to go to the performance. And for that, we have, um, oh, hang on a second, I'm on the wrong one. My apologies. Now I'm on the right one. All right. The top cap pulled up. I want to try something here just to see how it works. And... All right, uh, so top cap, we need 216.923. Let's try this. Okay. And... Sixteen nine two three. Okay, so what you'll do on this performance initialization, zero fuel weight, click the, the line select key next to it. Okay, the reason it's different than what we're typing in here. Aircraft weights. Uh, that's what usually does the difference. Their aircraft is heavier than what Simbrief and what professional flight planner has, which I try to keep those two together, by the way. So that's why our zero fuel is so high, is almost uh, 6,000 pounds higher. Um, we're going to account for that. So 6,000. We'll go with that. Okay. Um, fuel is good. Okay, wow. I did not realize what we're loaded down for. Reserve was 12.2. Now, a little thing about the reserves. A lot of people, oops, I didn't oops, try that again. Uh, basically, the way the rules are, and folks, feel free, comment, let me know if I'm wrong. Um, you got to have enough fuel at your alternate 
adds up to 45 minutes in the United States for United States flagged aircraft. Um, so that means uh, if you're flying from here to Gat or from Boston to Gatwick, you got to have obviously that fuel. You got to have the fuel to get to Paris, which is our declared alternate. And then if you go to Paris, there better be 45 minutes of fuel inside. So that's why you add the two up. And I know there's another piece to that that I'm not 100% sure on. But at least 12.2. Cost index 100. And I'm double checking. Yeah, they did get that right. Okay. And uh, 35,000. Okay. Yeah, you'll make those altitudes, folks. No worries. Okay. And now we go to the all-important thrust limit page. This one is pretty much captain's call. Now, if you want to use Professional Flight Planner, they do have that built in from the TopCat program. Uh the two work together to give you that information. Simbrief doesn't. Even though they say they do, they don't. And if they do, please point it out to me because I'd love to see how they relate to Professional Flight Planner. Real world pilots, you know how to do that. So I'm not going to even try to go down that road because I'd screw it up. All right, so we'll go to the takeoff page on TopCat. Update it here, close, got the right runway, take off landing, weather report updated, okay, dry, dry, uh, anti-ice, can't use, nope, <laughs> gotta love, hmm, I'm going here on top cat cabinet, the reason I'm getting a chuckle. It says anti-ice, and then your selections, on or off. That is the act. That's one of the actual selections, on or off. I'm like, oh, it's got to be one or the other, guys, not both. <laughs> Just okay. General humor for me. Takeoff data. Oh, dummy. Hang on. I forgot to deselect the runways. I will not be using. 15 right, two twos, two seven, three two, three, definitely three three right is out. It's only 2,500 feet long. Would be fun to watch, but not going to happen. And the two sixes. Okay, acres, takeoff report. This is for runway three three. Okay, so we are looking at. Okay, uh, TO 156. Okay, let's try it this route. Okay, so we're going to be doing a TO 1. Oh, I see the difference. Let's do the same as them. See if we get closer. All right, so we're going to. Good Lord, still a big discrepancy. All right, so we're going to go. Optimum compute one last time. Sorry for the time here folks but we are uh, just wanting to make sure 56 to 1 
interesting. Um, and this is when it gets fun is when the two are different. Um, okay, at least we're not even close on those. Okay. All right, we're going to go. All right, so here's what we're doing. We're going to be doing, sorry, that took a long time. I know next time to pre-flight that out um, before the stream starts. Uh, so, uh, TO1, so we'll select takeoff 1. You can see the select is there. Temperature 53. So we'll put that there. Climb one seems to be good. And zero eight zero. Oh my goodness, the winds have changed here. All right, so we're not going to have probably as long a taxi. I just happened to look up, and the winds appear to have changed on top of all of this. Um, so we're going to have to do a slight correction in our flight plan. Okay, hasn't showed up there yet. It does show here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to do the runway change. Okay, so we'll push departure arrival. Departure will now be... 080. I need to look at the airport. Hang on a second. We'll do this here in a oh, for real. I love when it makes you do this. Just after being in. Okay, so there's our route. Hang on a second. Uh, I'm trying to look over all the runways. That's not long. It looks like we're going to four right. Uh, four right. Okay. Close that. Move that. All right, so four right. Still on the lobster. Okay. Now I definitely want to make sure we don't have any. Good, we're still solid, okay. So we're gonna come back to here, to here. Nothing changes on this page. We are going to double check now. This is a nice thing about the, the uh, uh, top cat. I can adjust. Uh, run. What was our runway? Four right. And folks, that's what comes with old age. So we're recomputing full optimum. All right. Now, four right is 10,000 feet long. That also reminds me I need to make one other change. Unfortunately, this doesn't change the uh, data from SimBrief. It only changes the data we'll see for the runway, which is 10,006 feet long. Okay, so, wow, this is turning into a lovely run here. Um, so with our new data, the flaps will be 
first off, take off. And we're going to go 67. Flaps 20. Okay. So we got that finally plugged in. Come over here. It's flaps 20. Acceleration height 1,500 feet. These are definitely not going to be our Z or V speeds. You're going to be running 138 for V1. Okay, 144. Rotate. I double click just to make sure it took right. And 154. For V2, our CG24, and trim 4.7, it's, it's close. All right, so finally, folks, we got that step done. Let's get going. We need to get this airplane airborne. We're starting to get on the late side. All right, so we're going to go to the middle, and we're going to continue the uh, uh, checklist, believe it or not. You know, that thing we've been started, but we haven't had a chance to get back to it. Oh. And in the interim, we, uh, we'll get to that when it tells us to. So MCP is what's next. Basically, we set uh, 154 plus 10. Those with kids, you can go, hey, math test. Compliments, Captain Mike. Uh, new runway heading will be... 36036. Now, for takeoff, whoop, yeah, we'll just come up. We're going to leave, oh, so you know what we're working with. On the heading, we're going to leave the bank angle at auto. Once we get um, established on a cruise climb, we'll probably dial it up to like 20, 15, 20. Ease you know, lessens the bank the aircraft does. Uh, and again, we're going up to 35,000. Unless, of course, we have altitude restrictions. All right, so there we go. The MCP is now set. Hydraulics. Okay. We're going to leave one, two, three off. Turn number four to auxiliary fuel pumps. We're for now only going to turn on the back two, and that's so we can fire up the APU. However, I do want to look at how we're fuel loaded. So bear with me here. Click fuel. <clears throat> Those of you that have been with Flying with Mike have seen this pretty much even. Well, today is actually not going to be long, but we are going to be in uh, with our fuel uh, pipe open and our overrides on. So we'll come up here, turn the pipe on. The cross feeds, basically what that's going to do, uh, once we turn these pumps on, it will fill so that all the engines are going from all the pumps. Once we get even, we'll turn the overrides off and they'll go pump to in the tank to engine. So each tank will take care of its own engine at that point but once we fire up we'll be using all the tanks for all the engines kind of confusing I have a hard time trying to figure out the best way to explain that actually we're going to go ahead and turn them all on yeah why not this is more set up for a 747-8 and here you go see how with all the pumps on the uh cross feed which this is the big pipe that runs from the farthest pump uh, tanks out all the way through the center and connects so that you have all the tanks at this point fill or uh, running the engines when we turn these guys off these are the over overrides this one and these two then just these tanks will be running the show or these the tanks for their engines will be running the show for the engine. It's very complicating, and I missed one. Okay, we're going to go on because it's complicating. Uh, 
OBS audio is in norm. Um, lost my place. Enter phone switch off. Uh, voice recorder. I do not see that on here. So, uh, but we will say the ELT is guarded. Uh, and the anti-ice systems are off at the moment. We'll turn those if needed. Window heats are on. Yaw dampers are on. Outflows are off. Air conditioning, auto, auto, auto. Hang on a second. Back up to the top here. Trim air is on. That's the switch here. The upper and lower recirculating fans are on. We're going to keep the cargo heat off for the moment. When we fire up and start moving to our runway, we, we'll probably turn it on, if not at the runway. Uh, high flow switch. This one on ECS, equipment cooling system. Switch, normal. Pack one, that is this pack, is it normal? Two and three are at the off position. Uh, isolation valves open. And that just means we're going to connect the lines. So now they're open. So when the engines come alive, it flows right through the pressurization. Bleed uh, air switches are all on. EFIS, okay, is already set. Now let me go through that. EFIS are right here and right here. First officer has one captain has one all right so your dh at the top uh that's your decision height when i take off i use the this would say barrow on a 747 400 on the dash eight it'll say mda means really the same thing it's just another distance uh, from your pressure so like when you look at your chart you'll see in big numbers one two three and then below it 200 I know bad example but I think you get the point one two three is what the barometric pressure is 200 is the above ground level which means yeah what I just told you is below sea level Israel is a good place for that. That would be if there is an airport in the in the base in there around Jericho. <clears throat> but anyway, um, so that's part of it. We also get our altimeter set. Let's make sure that hasn't changed on us. Three zero one zero is the latest I have. Um, moving on, and then we make sure our. Uh, how we want the display to look with this knob and the range. Unfortunately, they're tied together. So if you set this to five, oh, I went the wrong way. Five, your navigator, your uh, navigator, sorry. First officer goes to five. That's one thing I don't like. I'm not on the team and I wouldn't even know where to begin to fix that. So, and then any of these switches besides the weather radar and the terrain radar set up for what you'd like. Okay, moving on. So we're going to make sure the displays are set and they are. Let's get this back to engine. Um, standby instruments. Set. Navigation selectors. I'm going to move over here. That is these. Make sure they're in the 12 o'clock position. And same over here. Just a little high, that's all. Um, let's see. Okay, we're going to move back to the middle and kind of pan down a little. All right, so uh, speed brake down. That is this lever in the down detent. Uh, thrust levers, they're in the middle. The guys pretty much know that. These are your reversers. Thrust levers are closed. Reversers are down. So when a pilot lands, he'll reach for those, pull them up. That's what opens up the engine to go funnel the power towards the front instead of to the back to push. 
um, fuel control levers that's under the throttles that's these four make sure they're in cutoff or off uh, radios are set almost got one radio to set here to our CTAF of 128 8 and basically uh, most every airport out there minus the really big ones Logan would be one of those have a common traffic frequency and that basically is when that tower is closed that's what all the airplanes will talk on and interesting enough all the ground vehicles will be on that same frequency too if they don't have that radio in them they ain't going to be out on the uh, uh, airport so they can everyone knows so you know if that van out there if you know that crash truck ambulance tug they're all on that frequency on the taxiways and runways so but anyway in the simulated world we use that CTAF for Logan for departure once airborne we switch to the uh, POSCON's guard of one two three four five the backup is one two one five hundred and that's how ATC gets a hold of you if they want you to come up on their channel uh, while we're here getting the radio set up we now have our CTAF in uh, let's set our uh, squawk two three four so that'll be this knob uh, four five all right and we'll keep it standby for now all right so the radios are set um, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the seatbelt sign we're boarding passengers now by the way uh, and we'll leave the auto brake break off till after pushback we have our ATC clearance and flight deck door is closed I think actually don't know that's something too I didn't even think about that it take forever with that one it is closed okay so that folks gets us going with the pre-flight this has gone really long and I do apologize a lot of little hiccups occurred there with that runway change so grab a cup of coffee grab something because we're gonna go right into the before start and push and start so um, for the before start let's go up to the top we're gonna kick on the APU now they've changed this up a little oh I must have already turned it because uh, it's kicking on a lot faster and I haven't updated so so the APU is coming on once it's throttled up and it does take a little longer than it did it when it first came out um, and they've been updating folks there's constant updates on this aircraft uh, this was one they took time to slow it down and make it more realistic, I think. I'll be honest, they won't let me on the cockpit when they uh, want to go flying. I don't understand why. I would love to be on the cockpit Tell, hey, I know how to fly. <laughs> but they don't, and it is what it is. But anyway, um, while we're waiting on it, I'm just checking some things out here folks if you like what you're seeing and hearing uh, folks feel free to follow us uh, we would love to have you along uh, every time we go live you get an email letting you know hey flying with Mike is going to blah 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 and you're welcome to join us you're welcome to fly with us we're on POSCON however uh, that's him the uh, Oceanics are up and they get to be a pain in the rump to try to do anything with and I just would rather not deal with them anymore so but anyway follow us if you like it we sure would appreciate it that helps us out knowing we're trying to do what we can that you all want um, if I put too much uh, instruction in it or too much 
extra information, by all means, hit the chat room, let me know. Speaking of which, uh, the APU has fired up. We're going to go ahead, turn the gens on. Uh, moving on from that, we check the brake pressure. That should be at the bottom of the green arc, and it is. Uh, fuel qualities, we're at 63.7. Uh, shipping papers, people are on board. Performance data checked and set. MCP's V2 is actually V2 plus 10, 164. Heading 036, 35,000. Takeoff speeds, we'll go through them one more time. I'm just moving it down. Uh, V1, 138. I don't know if I'm going to be able to click that or not. We'll give it a try. Uh, rotate, 144. And V2, 154. And again, our MCP is set for 10 knots over, so 164. Stape trim. All right, stave trim needs to go to uh, four. Let's see if I can do a good from here. No, I can't. Dog got it. Still hard to read. Okay. So we'll bring it up to here. Uh, rudder and aileron to zero. Auto start as needed. We're going to kick it on. And uh, recall will be completed. We'll click stat. Cancel, recall. And we're going to go ahead, turn on, since we have the APU now, hydraulics one, two, and three. Auxiliary keeps one for four. That allows us to push back with that pin in. All right, so we're at the point now, folks, where we can perform the departure brief. Um, just have one program I need to get running at this time. Bear with me as I get it started. And it meant having to minimize. And we're, we're flying with Millennium Aviation Company today. So I'm just getting their ACAR program up and running. I already am ready for the departure brief. I just need to get us going on there. So, um, for push and start, all we're going to be doing is basically kicking on the lights, uh, the red light, the beacons, uh, pack one will stay on, and I believe that's it. Make sure all of our fuel pumps are on. Uh, let's do a quick check here. All right, so we got that. Okay, flying that bid. Okay, and always the fun part. All right, where are you, Delta? And there are a bunch to pick from. Okay, Delta, where are you? Oh, there you are. Boom. All right, load. 270. Uh, I think it's 54. Hang on a second here. 54.30. Okay, I thought so. Okay, and make sure our sounds will come on right. Uh, V1. V2's 144, 154. Save. Okay, for the departure brief, let's get some toolkit in here. And we're going to keep it that way so we don't forget. And, of course, that doesn't mean I won't, but still. 
So again, we've updated the flight plan. We're now four right instead of th uh, three three left, or three one left. I forget which one it is now. But anyway, uh, it's ten thousand foot runway, nineteen feet heading zero three six. Transition level here is eighteen thousand. In about six hours from now, we'll do the arrival brief. Their transition level six thousand. Okay, for this uh, quick departure brief, uh, we'll pull up our nav graph here on Sim Toolkit. There's our departure. I, it's not fully set up. I just realized it's still set the other way. There we go. So you can kind of see, we'll zoom it, get that out of here. We're going to basically go straight and make a little jog off to the right and then up. But let's... Uh, not to get too far ahead of ourselves. Okay, so okay, we're using the nav graph charts again, folks. Sim Toolkit is free. Nav graph is a service you pay for, and you can that Sim Toolkit will read from. So, uh, <clears throat> so the the actual program itself behind this that's free. Um, so anyway, here's your frequencies if ATC is available, uh, even down to here. We're parked up here in the E gates, to be specific, E7. And then basically we're going to push nose facing, for the most part, east. And then we'll taxi A to, uh, around. Uh, we'll come over to, uh, uh, we'll probably, uh, you know, we'll just probably push back facing east, take A to Z to Bravo, follow it around till we go over to four right. And we'll go back to the other chart so you can see that full taxi. We're going to take Bravo all the way down and across to our runway. Departure for today, LBSTA-6. Uh, for the Jebson charts, that's, uh, this one is valid 23 February 18, page 10 30 maybe. And basically, again, across the top, let me uh, try to make this fit in here, uh, our frequencies altitude 19 transition 18,000 we need DME slash DME slash IRU all of that we have or GPS radar is required RNAV and uh, for turbo jets only so you Cessna drivers we don't want to see you unless you're in a citation uh -huh. qualified myself all right our top altitude is 5,000 no ATC we're going to blow through that um, so for four right, we just basically climb on a heading of zero three five. We'll adjust here in a moment to 520 feet. Then we go direct enhance, then track zero ninety one to Herbie. There's that right turn I told you about at or above four thousand. Then direct or then on depicted route to LBSTA. Uh, then from there, maintain 5,000. Expect 10 minutes after departure, your filed altitude. Pretty standard U.S. flying. All right, so pictorially, here we go. 035 to Enhant, 91 to Herbie, to Stace, I'm sorry, Stay C, to Sean, to Lobster, to Lobster. I don't like lobster, but I know my wife loves it up there. All right. Uh, let's see. And that's our departure, folks. Uh, again, real quick, let me, uh, just for fun, here's the live map. It's zoomed in to Boston and gives you an idea where we are. Now, when I zoom out, anything with a little blue airplane, it could be looking like a little Cessna to something big. That is a SIM Toolkit user. But again, 
pushing back A to Z to B to 4 right. All right, so let's zoom out. And again, one other neat feature showing it to you right now. If you come into, say, Gatwick, which we'll be using this possibly, you can zoom down and be able to tell where you need to go. If the controller say go to this, go to that, go to that, go over to here, you'll be able to see it on the map and have an idea of what the heck you're doing. May not even match up to what's at the airport because they don't, you know, necessarily always match. But anyway, neat feature. But we'll keep zooming out here a little bit. I'm not really looking for some toolkit guys, but come on, catch up to me. There we go. So you can see my blue. If there was one, my Man, I'm shocked there aren't any in this. Oh, there they are. So you can see them way down here, over here. There is a ton of them moving up also on VATSIM, so probably some of those are using this. All right, folks, I've been on here too long, and the plane's been sitting too long. It's an hour and 15 minutes, 20, or uh, hour, 16 minutes into the stream, and we haven't turned an engine. We're going to do that right now. Um, we got to first get this out of the way. All right, folks, let's get that pushback tug on its way. Now, an X-Plane under plugins, I highly recommend uh, better pushback. Fly with Lua. The only thing I use that for um, is for FedEx Virtual that I fly with or Express Virtual. They have a uh, modification for the 747 I can use that with and terrain radar. Those are the big three I uh, recommend it, of course. X UIPC, so you can run X pilot and eight cars. Uh, so with that, I'm going to get the better pushback pre-planned. Said we're going to face, for the most part, to the east. Okay, and that looks good. Click it into place. Hopefully it won't be too loud in your ears. Click enter. Ground to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. L-U-Q-S-K, welcome aboard. Hopefully you've got your 7-4 or aircraft of choice ready to go out of Gatwick for, I'm sorry, correction. Reverse that. Boston. To Gatwick. Okay, and we're getting the pushback rolling. Sorry for the long delay. Ground to cockpit. To this Toe is driving up. All right, so we're waiting on the tug now. One more time, we're going to go through it. The uh, APU is on. That's well. Let's do it where we can read them. APU's running. Uh, the gen's on. The brake pressure is still good. Uh, fuel quantities. 65 or 63.5 performance is fine MCP all set we're ready to go and we're gonna turn on the beacons make sure all the fuel pumps are on make sure I'm not missing any steps nope Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. We are forgetting one thing, folks. Uh, let's come down to, I use this right now for ground handling. Let's remove those chocks. Okay, we're gonna turn our transponder to on. And then basically, since we're in auto start, all you got to do is pull the engines you're going to start. So, for instance, I'm going to do it from a better angle. Let's go ahead and arm up one and four. That does not mean those blades are starting to turn out there. In auto start, it just arms the engine. To start it... Toe connected and bypass pin in service. Release parking brake. You have to it, turn the physical fuel switch on. on a second <laughs> I 
You know, I love looking sometimes at Mac Air's. Uh, um, Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Okay, it it says four rocket engines on this thing. Really? <laughs> but anyway, those control switches will then start the process. We're gonna let them push us just a little here. Get outside. Let y'all see the queen as she backs up. And like Flight Simulator, those guys don't care there's a plane pushing. Oh, wait, there's somebody that does. And you didn't see that door open. Now it's closed. It kind of cracks me up. They say it's closed, but it's not. Oh, we're causing a traffic jam. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look, there's a Mercedes being pulled in the, in the team of baggage carts. All right, it's, it's fun to watch. If I could find a better program for that, I would. But anyway, let's go ahead. We've got one and four arms, so engine one to run, engine four to run. And you can see them beginning to spool. At 20-ish, they'll light off, and you'll see the EGTs light at the same time. They'll start screaming up. And while we're pushing, I want to get a different... Just gives me a, a time from when we started. I can hear the engines firing. Hopefully you can. I'm going to set that one up. to VNAV. Okay. And we're almost done pushing back. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Okay. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. All right, so we're going to go ahead, get the M boards fired up. They're armed. But just so you can see again, see how the switches are pulled. Then we just come down. switch to run and we're gonna wait for him to fire up shouldn't be long here and we'll have a light off there they go thing. Now, a couple of things here that real world pilots will tell you you never turn the uh, um, hydraulic pump, especially on the 4-7, number 4, on to you see that pin. Which will be out this window. Oh, is disconnected. I'm bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. Well, see you next time and have a safe flight. Now at our airport, I work at an airport, at our airport they'll actually be outside holding that pin right now. Then we can switch it. But here, he's got to drive the little tug over to here. When it stops, he pops out of the vehicle. Just after the truck hits him, boom, almost. And there he is with his hands up holding the pin. All right, folks, that's our signal to charge up number four. Okay, so, and with that, we have all four engines running, stable, and uh, we're good to go. So, after start checklist, ignition, 
that is this area right here we turn on continuous APU we can turn off now and that too will take some time um, Let's see, hydraulic demand switch is already in the auto position. Anti-ice, we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna hold. We'll see what we got at the end of the runway. I don't think we need to turn it on. Um, da, 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 uh, recall. Cancel, recall, boom. And we'll get the auto throttle. And here's everything we got going on. This one we can't do anything about. Packs two and three, that we can. Let's get those two turned on for now. And APU, it's in the, sh uh, here we'll show you what it's doing. It's still running, it's in the cool down mode. It takes about, I know some as many as four minutes to cool down before they start spooling off. Uh, parking brake is still set and then our condi uh, continuous ignition on. All right, folks, let's get uh, clearance to taxi, and we are out of here. So stand by, just making sure no ATC. Boston traffic, Mac 4, 7, or 572, my pilot. Uh, we're going to taxi to runway 4 right from stand E7, Echo 7. All right, folks, so here we go. Basically, the taxi, it's taxi lights, EFAS is set, and let's get our taxi lights going, and he's cleared us to taxi. Now, what I like to do once we're ready to move, I put this one in our progress page because I'm really not going to refer to it much. We'll put the parking brakes and reject. This one I put into VNAV. We'll set our flaps to, hang on, 20. If I come over to this one, come down a little, I can actually physically move them to that. And you can see they're in transit to 20. And then finally, before we get rolling, let's do a quick flight control check. You can see them moving there. And folks, this is good if you're uh, even a private pilot. Make sure those gust locks are off, because folks, if they're in place, <laughs> you ain't going anywhere. They ain't going to turn. All right, so parking brakes off. Give her some power. I have to give her more because she is heavy. And then once we get past our gate, all right, we can now landing light on. All right, folks, so now would be a time. I'll give you as another break because it's going to take a little bit to taxi to the end of the runway. So we'll pick this up at the other end of the runway. Uh, Twitch users will, uh, they may have a few things to say. I've never, well, I have, I have been to Boston Logan one time back in 1992 when I got married to my beautiful wife. And uh, we honeymooned up in New Hampshire. Flew into Logan. So, folks, we'll see you at the end of the runway. All right, folks, uh, we're back here. We're going to do the before takeoff checklist because we're now working our way around four left over to four right. So, before takeoff, MCP is set go through that here as I get through the turn. Uh, speed is set for V2 plus 10, 164 on the knots. 
uh, heading 036, altitude 35,000. We would set 5,000 if we had ATC. Uh, clock is set. We'll turn it on on the runway. Uh, the uh, first officers is going. Transponder, we're going to now move all the way over to TARA. And let the flight attendants know that flying with Mike is about to take flight. Boston traffic, Mac Air 572, taking runway four left for departure. Okay, auto throttle comes on. As soon as we cross the hold line up here, that was the instrument line for four left and four right. Uh, we're ready to go. So Okay, we'll do a TCAS check here. And we're going to put terrain on this one, weather on that one. Even though it kind of looks like it blurs it onto them. Um, okay, here we go. Strobes on. And oh, by the way, folks, V1 is 138, V rotate 144, V2 154. If this is simulated like it should be, and I have no reason to doubt it won't, we should only have 235 feet of runway we lift off. Okay, we're going to come in here. We're going to line up and wait for a second. And what I'm going to do is pull up our sticks real quick. Maybe, he says, real quick. Uh, before takeoff, flap set. Normal uh, takeoff clearance obtained. Okay. Okay, everything's good there. Right, we are set, ready to go, folks. Timer on. Lights on. Engine ice only on. APU bleed can go off now. Okay, we are rolling, folks. Uh, running through the takeoff here real quick. Okay. LNAV, VNAV set. Takeoff power set in. 80 knots. V1, rotate. V2. Gear up. Gear up. Pilot's got it now.
plugging in, I like to put in 240 to 10,000 feet. Little flaps to 5. And what, why I do that is with a lot of uh, virtual airlines, you cross 250, they start penalizing you. Some penalize you actually for it. Some just, you know, make notes of it. Uh, so I just keep it at 240 to try to prevent that. Okay. Flaps one. to our next turn here as I got us accelerating. There it goes into it. Alright, we're going to do a quick after takeoff because we're already at 9,000 feet. Uh, normally I would do it in this area, but we uh, rocketed out of there. Let's see if it'll 10,000 feet. Okay. It did not. Okay, so we're going to go to 310. Flaps up. All right, so let's do that after takeoff because uh, we're going to get way too far ahead. Um, after takeoff, positive rate of climb. We got the gear up and off. Flaps are retracted and almost completely up. They are now. Uh, auto brakes. They're down here and they are in the off position. Uh, autopilot is engaged. You can tell that by here, command. And one of these lights lit. Pressurization will kind of monitor right here as we climb out. Uh, 10,000 feet, which is 2,000 feet behind us already. Turn the landing lights off. And a transition altitude, which again is 18,000 feet here, will set for um, standard barometric pressures as well as um, uh, turn off the uh, ignition continuous. All right, so looking at this real quick, landing gears up and off, flaps are up. We're just waiting for the transition level. <clears throat> All right, folks, well, there you go. Uh, after an hour and 40 minutes, we're finally airborne on a six hour odyssey to uh, Gatwick International Airport in the UK, outside of London. Uh, heading to uh, currently we're on track 18,000 feet for Sean oh, there's transition so what we'll do is simply click the STD button I at the same time since I know we're going to Europe switch into hectopascals same thing on the other side it's not like Zebo where it does it all for you and I believe my Airbus that I just bought does that too. Don't quote me on that, but I think it does from Flight Factor. And while we're here, let's dial out a little bit on our TCAS. And we're going to go up top here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the wing lights off for the passengers. Continuous on the engines. And ladies and gentlemen, we're in cruise climb at this point. Uh, cruising up to 35,000. Here comes lobster. Otherwise, I like to call it, we'll call it lobster. And uh, after this, I believe it's Alec we're headed to, or Alex. And then uh, on our way.
Alright, get myself caught up here on some of the people that have been viewing in. But there you go, folks. We are on our way. Uh, it's a six-hour... Well, we'll find out exactly what we're doing now. Um, let me see if I can't get this thing now to do it. Okay, what I've done is I pulled, they still have the default um, FMCs behind it. So that's what I'm using. We'll see if it did anything. Did think so. All right, there we go. Other than a quick uptick in uh, climb rate. All right, so let's take a look. There you go, folks. The queen of the sky, where she needs to be in the sky. And what we're going to do now that we're airborne, we're going to switch to our airborne guard channel. And I'm going to take a look at something here, see if, I've always wondered if it did. One, two, one, two, three, okay, so. What I was doing is I wanted to get the um, CTAF for when we get there. Um, trying again, the big thing is always to try to stay ahead of the bird. Uh, still nothing in our way. To, to, uh, oh, we got a Concorde coming out. Where is he coming from? Hang on. Uh, doesn't say. Uh, anyway, there is a Concorde in the sky. All right, so the, uh, we're on our way. Let's put this back up so you all can see. And folks, since we're in cruise climb, coming up to 35,000, let's just go ahead and say cruise. Um, just watch it here. Queuing up the music right now. Okay, we are there. Slower down just a bit. All right, folks, there you go. We're in cruise. Get the seat belts off for the passengers behind us while we're here. Okay, so uh, Gatwick is 2,800 miles ahead of us. We're estimating uh, about 110 miles prior to that. Oh, wait a minute. 190 miles prior to that. 
will start our top of descent. Well, we haven't even got the runway in and all the uh, altitudes possible modifications at all because that's the way things roll with this thing. Uh, again, transition altitude, we are in standard. Let's just do that one. And let me set this one here real quick to approach. And get rid of those. All right, so we're in STD, which is standard. 1013 for everywhere but the U.S. No, we're not the only ones, but still. Um, we are, EFIS is checked, and what I'm going to do is set it up for, let's see if I got it right. Nope. Okay. For the, okay, we're in a descent. Oh, I don't lie. itself out here in a minute um, and we're leveled off folks passenger signs off we're in cruise hope you enjoy the flight currently Mac Air shows us uh, let's get the right Mac Air up here there we go and we're five hours 50 minutes out of Gatwick uh, we'll be on the side here, folks. Feel free to chat in the chat room. Uh, we look forward to talking with y'all and uh, hope you enjoy the flight.
Well, hello everyone. Gave you that two song uh, warning and well, what a great song to end it on as we uh, approach the arrival brief and uh, top of descent on top of it. Uh, the encounter uh, was that off of Pretzel Rocks. Uh, approaching Nirvana was the uh, uh, either album or group. <clears throat> and we are approaching Gatwick at about uh, 300 miles out and ETA under one hour. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Sim Toolkit over and uh, we're going to get into this arrival brief because looking at the uh, aircraft, we're 275 miles out. So let's get to work here. First off, see a lot of rain west of London. Hopefully it stays there. I'd really like to shoot a visual, uh, but We'll do what we have to to get in. You've seen the METAR, latest METAR, uh, as of 2220 Zulu. 20 minutes or so ago, maybe 30. Winds 210 at 8. Uh, visibility appears to me to be unlimited. Folks that live out in that area, 999 would be like a 10 here statue at mile 999 would be unlimited i'm assuming please uh correct me if i'm wrong in the chat box uh scattered clouds at 1100 feet temperature eight degrees celsius six degrees celsius on the dew point <clears throat> so and our q h is 1024 again you can read that there we'll put it up one more time before we start descending um, but now uh, let's pull up uh, the NAVGRAPH information. Uh, as you can see, we're approaching the uh, coast of Ireland. Slaney is at the transition from Shannon Irish uh, uh, Center to the UK. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, London Center. So, and then we track in. All right, so we're going to come in on the Biedrich 1 Gulf arrival. Now, that entails a couple of things, and that's why I'm jumping in now. And why aren't you pulling up? There it is. Okay, first thing across the top. Um, we're not in ATC, and I've double-checked, triple-checked. I don't see any as of right now. The ATIS is 136.525. I'm not going to check it. I've got METARs to work with. Airport elevation, 203 feet above sea level. Now, transition level get into that in just a second. 6,000 is what we have on uh, uh, SIM Toolkit when we look it up under the plan. Uh, we need RNAV 5 or better. Standard routes may be varied by ETC and aircraft may be instructed direct waypoints with vectoring. You know, folks, it's really nothing new than what we do here in the States, what they just said, other than the RNAV 5. I'm not used to that. <clears throat> All right, so we got to cross Biedrich. Uh, let's see first if they give us any uh, instructions. They sure do down here. So I'll try to keep this to where you can see it. Again, this is the Biedrich 1 uh, Golf Arrival. And this is chart uh, valid from 20 November 2020 uh, on 20-2C page of the JEP. So, <clears throat> real quick before we get into it, pilots should plan for possible descent clearance. Biedrich at 14,000, Willow at 7,000. But actual descent clearances come from ATC. No ATC comes from me. Uh, do not proceed beyond Willow without ATC. Without ATC, I'm ATC. All right, so routing. We're going to come in from Biedrich or Bedrick, Bedick. Uh, flight level 140. Uh, the reason they still say that is it's 6,000 when we switch. To Nigget, to mid VOR, which is right here, to Holly, loop around to Willow. And technically it's a hold there. You'll see here as we go to the initial. Now, 14,000 at Bedick. Willow, uh, 7,000, maximum speeds here of uh, 220. When we cross Holly, the maximum speed is 220. 
coming over. Oh, I miss Tofas. Come off of Tofas no faster than 250. <clears throat> We're going to be below 10,000, so it doesn't matter. Now, once we uh, get to Willow, as you can see, we're looping back. We're coming in this way, by the way. So let's go to the initial approach. Now, most of the airports in the UK have two step-down ILSs. They've got the approach, initial approach to the localizer from fixes. Then they have the actual ILS. So this is the initial. Um, let me go up to the top here. Um, come on. Come on. I hate when it won't behave. There it goes. Maybe. Okay, there we go. All right, so again, this is the London Gatwick ILS DME runway 26 left. Across the top here is our frequencies if we have ATC who we'll talk to. Um, common traffic frequency here is Gatwick Tower 124.230. We will broadcast into clear on that. Um, <clears throat> now, for the actual ILS approach, which we're going to do twice, for because it's here on the page both times, uh, the ILS, here's Willow, here's the airport. Uh, so you got to see, we got to loop our way back to it. 110.9, identified India Whiskey Whiskey. The approach course, 258. Now, refer to the chart on the localizer for when we're supposed to reach the glide slope and uh, also our minimums. Uh, runway elevations 196. So, uh, procedurally, uh, what we're going to do, hang on, I'm just kind of, come on, chart. Hey, when they, there it goes. Come on, there we go. Okay. Uh, we're going to depart Willow, looping back on a heading of 104 to distance 22 from Mid Midhurst. That's 114.0. Decimal zero. Then we're going to turn to 042, proceed to Mayfield. Now, technically, many times, see what they're doing is stair-stepping you into the traffic. They'll throw you maybe into a hold here. Then you'll come out at 2,000 feet to distance uh, 3 from May, which is again where we were. Uh, come on. No, you got it in you. Up here to distance 8.5. Again, we have to be at 2,000 feet here. We're going to make the turn onto the localizer. Now, at this point, we switch to the other chart. It's kind of cumbersome uh, in the aircraft to be switching charts like that. But that's how they operate here in London, so that's how we're going to. Now, this is for a Cat 1, Cat 2, Cat 3, doesn't matter, on 26 left Gatwick. <clears throat> um, again, you see our information. Now, when we get to this point here, distance 5.5 from the localizer, we are to be, uh, I'm sorry, 4.0. That's weird, it's not marked correctly. Anyway. Uh, 1,520 feet, MSL, 1,324 feet, AGL. Uh, we'll refer to the bottom for the minimums, but our uh, DA is uh, 200 feet or 396, depending if we're Cat 1, Cat 2, Cat 3. Oh, sorry, folks. Uh, if we go missed approach, and that's what these directions are here, we'll see it in a picture in a moment. Uh, climb to 3,000, straight ahead on runway heading until we pass 2,000 feet or DME 1.0 of the uh, uh, India Whiskey Whiskey, our localizer. Then we're going to turn left to 178 and then continue on as directed. <clears throat> now, uh, here's where the transition altitude is of 6,000. Uh, okay, so, oh, it, I love it when it stops halfway. There we go. So here you go. We're coming in 258, distance 5, to still at 2,000 feet, and we should, and we'll grab the glide slope and come in. Um, 
following it down. Here again, um, you can see we're going to have Hiles, two, and the Pappies will be on the left side. Cat three minimums, decision height 50 feet. Uh, uh, RA is 102, 296, and RVR minimum uh, for, oh, what are we doing? Well, it is got to be at least 75 or higher. Okay, that's basically what it's saying here. Then finally, breaks it down even more. And if we circle the land, which we're not going to do. So there you go, folks. There's the charts. Uh, we're going to do the V-speeds here momentarily. I'm working that up in the, as we speak. Uh, whoops, wrong one. I always love when I pull the wrong board up. And updated to the current METAR. So we're going to be going 139 for a V-ref. We're about to set that. 144 to 145 is where we're going to set the speed for the landing. Coming down and we'll slow once we cross the threshold. Okay, so there's our arrival brief. Once we're on the ground, we're going to be coming into six left. Our goal is Fox Romeo, Golf Romeo. My luck, it could go all the way to, Gol jo uh, to Ch Joliet. If so, we taxi back, and we're going to be aiming. Oh, I hate when this thing is doing this. There we go. Uh, into this area of this terminal. Just so if anyone's flying with us, you know where I'm headed. I'm aiming, actually, for spot 557, but I don't know if that's what it says in the sim or not. I didn't check. So, anyway, that is our arrival brief, folks. And I'm going to get medic up and uh, we're going to go through here and make sure everything is set properly because we are now 181 miles out. Okay. So, to make sure everything's set properly, let's go to the departure arrival page. Click arrival for here. We've already got the medic 6 on here. We're coming in on the ILS 26 left. Willow. So everything went back to select, and then we're going to hit execute, and we're going to go through this again. Okay, now let's go to legs. Stu, looking for bedding. There it is. Okay, so it does say 14. Nigget, mid, tufas, holly, willow, 4,000. And may, just making sure... I think it's set up the way we want. So we'll kind of watch it as we come in. Um, and then here's our vector on missed approach. All right, folks, that wraps up the arrival brief minus putting in our approach information. Now they show 142. Well, that's not what we're, we've got it programmed 30 uh, one, three, nine. <clears throat> and that's for a flaps 30. Air condition only on, you know, and we can't turn the anti-ice on because it says on or off. It's not two separate selections. It's one line. It doesn't mean anything. So we're going to go with 139. And it still doesn't show up over here. Yeah. So that's where some of my auto land issues come into play. All right, that, folks, is the complete um, arrival brief. And I will go through this one more time real quick because I see I forgot to do something. All right, there we go. All right, so what we did, two things. We went to departure arrival, EGKK. We select arrival. Now, everything's in here, but we... Uh, um, selected the runway we wanted and the transition all of these became select we clicked execute and then we checked it with our legs okay then we came over to here the init ref clicked approach now these numbers are not correct 
for our calculations. So all you do is type in the flap setting, which we're doing a 30, slash, and then the speed we came up with on our uh, TopCat program we run, 139, and then we put it in here, and as you can see, it shows up. And then I just came back to progress, where we're 225 miles from top of descent. So we're closing in at a pretty good rate. Um, one thing you might want to write down, the landing distance we need is 6,979 feet for the weight, the brakes, and uh, the speed we'll be landing. <clears throat> that will leave us 1,423 feet. Folks, that's if you do this spectacularly right, which the professionals that fly these planes all the time do every day. Not a plane that's not completely up to spec yet. It's in many ways up to spec, but it's still off in many areas. So that's our uh, arrival brief. Um, let me... Okay, so as a five, where are we at? 2020 Z. Okay, now anything I do ETE-wise now will reflect as we're there, or pretty close to. And, I mean, for the most part, we are. We're over Ireland or pushing maybe into the uh, channel between Ireland and England. But uh, Slanty is still, uh, what is that, 58 miles, 55 miles out. So, now, uh, what we can also do, and I'm going to do this at a little closer in, um, in the low 100s, uh, we can begin our descent checklist. But for now, just be mindful, 14,000 at Bedick, 7,000 at Willow, 2,000 as we come off of uh, Mayfield. That's our big numbers. Also, 220 off of Willow. I'll probably be at 210 and maybe one to one, flap one or flap five. We'll see. And then we'll begin getting into our configuration for the ILS. Because I think we're only going to have like 10 miles. Uh, let's see. Correction, 5.5 miles. But I'm sure we intercepted about 10 miles out. So we'll be fully configured. We'll be good to go when we come over. I want to be at 160 minute maximum. Gear down, flaps at least 20, if not down to full. We'll see how this works out for me. <clears throat> All right, folks. So uh, I'm kind of looking at the charts here again, getting everything put to memory. And remember, transition altitude is, or level, is 6,000. So let's get that plugged in. That's something we can be doing right now. Well, I don't know if we'll be able to, but... Let me show you for those that have possibly pay wear aircraft and you're going, where do I put that in? Or PMDG, because I know I watch a lot of other streams and they struggle and I have to kind of type in there and let them know where to look. So, what you do is go to VNAV. Then you go to the descent page. You're going to get to the forecast. Now, it doesn't work on this plane. However, when you get on the forecast, upper left-hand corner, I believe it is, it'll say transition, type in, in this case, 060, 6000, whatever you want to put in for 6000, but technically it is 060. Uh, pl punch the line select key next to it, and that sets it. So, two things. Let you know when you hit transition, because what it's going to do, is and I'm in the wrong position here sorry folks Boom. okay it's gonna first this will go to yellow at 6,000 
letting you know switch to local uh, app or when you hit transition this will go yellow letting you know to switch to local barometric pressures be it inches or hectopascals <clears throat> and then you continue in same thing climbing it lets you know when to switch to the standard so everyone's working within the same numbers so when it says 35,000 on your gauge at STD or 10, 13, or 2992, again, depending which system you're on, uh, it'll show 35,000 to the radar controller, 35,000 to any other TCAS in the area if you're getting into a conflict. So that's why they do that. Below that, it's that part I don't understand, but I think it's so you have actual readings this uh, 35,000 feet we're not really worried about hitting anything but someone else at 5,000 feet well depending on where you're at in the world you could smack a mountain so they may want you to adjust so that adjusts for the altitude case in point Denver so mile high so they'll want you on 10,000 feet. Well, you've only got 5,000 feet AGL at that point, folks. So, anyway, I'm babbling. I will sit back, relax, as I hope you all will, and uh, we'll be uh, we're all set to come down. Uh, we'll be doing our descent checklist here at about 70 miles. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and kick another song out. So, relax, enjoy the weekend as we come in.
Okay, that song snuck up on me faster than I'd expected. Um, hang on a second here. Okay, so we are now under 100 miles out of top of descent. Uh, welcome aboard to all of those. Uh, we did do the arrival brief. In a nutshell, uh, we're coming in on the Bedic One Gulf arrival. Um, now, I may have to set a pause here real quick. I'm going to warn you ahead of time in case I start really hearing thunder. We have some stronger thunderstorms getting ready to move in around us. So I may have to go into a short pause to get windows down and air conditioning probably on as the, the storms come through. But we'll see. We're going to keep uh, trucking on here. Uh, Nupo is ahead of us by 30 miles. Uh, top of descent is oh, 66 or is that 86? Hang on, zooming in. Let's pan down 85 miles so the old eyes are still old <clears throat> but i wanted to throw that caveat out there just so you all are aware what could happen on the way in now uh real quick the bedic one golf arrival big things to remember bedic will be at 14,000 feet willow which is a half portion of a hold 7,200 7,000 and then 220 maximum on our speed. We're not going to hold unless we're not high, uh, low enough yet. We'll go into the hold if we need to. From Willow, we'll then work our way past Mayfield VOR, where we'll need to be below at or around 2,000 feet. Take that up to the localizer to come in. All right, and as you can tell, it is dark here. We're going to set our Q&H now. I'd rather do it this way. That way I can see both real easy. Well, he says that cautiously. All right, hang on. Let me see. Nope, not good enough. Hang on a second, folks. Oh, wait. So. Actually, I'm going to come down to this. I am going to have to do it this way. Inches of mercury is so much easier to work with here, folks. Hate to break it to you. And this plane will tell you if you're not the same. And what we're doing is presetting our Q&H. So we're set up there for our arrival, uh, now 69 miles out. Um, VREF again is 139, approach 150, to, I'm sorry, 145, 144. We'll probably come in 160 and uh, slow as we're coming in. And I'm hoping if the you know weather is holding off, let me give you a real quick uh, Look here at Sim Toolkit while we have the second. You can see we got a lot of rain out in this area, um, but it looks like it's still on the western portions of the UK, not over London yet. So hopefully the clouds and huh, kind of like St. Louis. But anyway, uh, you can see our route coming in. We'll go here down. There's a little hold here, and then we work our way to the final approach. That gives it to you in a nutshell. Uh, we're going to clear that out. And uh, we're not using the overlay today. Hang on a second. Let me see what that warning message is. Are we having internet issues? Nope. Uh, that's my uh, live ATC buffering. So we are just uh, tracking in. Once we get to about 30 miles out, I am going to initiate the descent because um, I want to make sure we're at 14. So we'll see, though. So, yeah, we're starting down now. I just saw Bennett. Holy mackerel. Oh, 
Okay, we're gonna be high on this one. Gotta love it. Let's see if it's gonna start us down. I doubt it. Well, I know one way to start us down. for the best here. Make sure we continue our descent. I may put us in a hold. Um, yeah, I'm going to probably put us in a hold here. Let's see when we come over Olski. Uh, Ol Oak S OK is -E I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. All right, there we go. 4,200 feet a minute. We'll see what happens here. We'll keep it in the middle. Now transition is 6,000. So at that point, we'll click STD on our EFIS panel here. That'll set us to 1020. And the, that we've already pre-assigned. Uh, let's go ahead uh, do the descent checklist since uh, we're a little out of sequence here. Uh, that is passenger signs on. Sorry folks. Auto brakes set three. Pressurization checked. That's right here folks real easy to check. Okay we're still coming down pretty good. Gonna switch into IAS. Uh, recall. And no problems. Auto brakes are at three. Approach briefing has been completed. Uh, back up to the top here. Uh, transition altitude. What I'm gonna do is at 18,000, folks. I'm gonna turn on the ignition uh, continuous. They say transition level. You know, it's probably 6,000 feet, it's not a lot. So we're going to do it at transition, at U.S. transition. Okay, airspeed seems to be doing good. We're on course for, well, we'll see. We're 22 miles out. I don't know if we can drop the 7,000 feet to make me feel comfortable. Um, but that's okay, we'll see. Um, and let me make sure everything's clear. We didn't leave anything to chance. We did not. All right. So we're going to leave the music off as we descend. Uh, but we are going to pick this up again. Um, I'm going to kind of pay attention here. Please, any questions, anything you see I missed or didn't do, or like, what did you do that for? Folks, hit that chat room. Let me know. Uh, I am by far not an expert on the 7-4. I do have quite a bit of flight hours, but it's with the good old Command L on. Otto has been doing a lot of my flying, so by all means, if you see I need to change up something, let me know. Checklist I'm using I found on the internet. I do have PMDG's checklist from version 2 of the Queen of Sky uh, that I can pull out. It's actually from FS2 Crew that I can pull out and refer to if I need to. So, I've been very close to doing that, by the way. Okay, we're gonna come down at 800 feet a minute. Okay, it looks like back under control. That was, oh, you gotta love it. We're coming down at 800 feet a minute. And there you go. See, now it doesn't say anymore. However, pretty sure if we go to NAVRAD, there it is. 110.9. Uh, let's see if we can get the identifier on it. 26 left. 
Oh, that's a bummer. I thought you could get... Yeah, you should be able to see the identifier as well. But anyway, so we are tuned in. Now, whether things will come together like we need them to, we'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and begin our slowdown. For now, 250. Until we begin reaching. Off Willow. Off seven, uh, eight, uh, 18. So 18 miles. So let's kind of get her coming down a little more. See if she'll take. Gonna let her slow to 250 and see if she'll pick up the descent. Worst case scenario, we'll go around once at Willow. Okay, folks. Uh, it's been a long run. Six and a half hours flying time. Uh, actually, no, not six and a half. Uh, about six. And hour and 25 minutes on the setup and all on the stream. It's hard to believe that I actually set most of the flight up, but yet it still took that long. All right, so there's 250, and we're still dragging our feet on this descent. At Midhurst, I'm going to drop it. Again, there's our VOR identifier, and you can kind of see what we've got to do. We're going to come around... Uh, yeah, we're going to hit Holly, come around to Willow, come back up, and I'm kind of curious. I didn't see that. To, to here, to here, and then on to the localizer. Okay, 250. We're coming down. Start at 1500. It's only five miles to this one and 17 miles to Holly. Holly, we got to be slowed to 220. So, okay. And a refresher 139, 144. 139 is V ref, 144 is approach speed. We'll do our best to maintain. Okay, we're now going to two foes. Let's get that. Uh, as you can tell, I like to keep everything lined up just in the outset. We are not coming down at the rate I'd like to. Okay, there's 10,000. Ten thousands when the lights come on. So, here they come. Ten thousand feet. I hate this part because I never can tell if they're actually on. And we'll get the wing lights on. We'll hope for the best. Go for the worst. Okay, so let's get some speed brake action going. We're going to go ahead and begin to slow to 220 as well. Part of me just says go. Actually, I'm going to bring her down to 210. If we level off, I just might. OK, 
okay. Let's go standard. Standard, even though I know we're a thousand feet above, it's one less thing to forget that I have to deal with him forgetting. All right, so uh, welcome to the channel, everyone. We are right now working in for the ILS approach to runway 26 left at Gatwick. We're leveling off at uh, uh, 7,000 and uh, 210. Let's go ahead and go to flaps five. And Okay, I'm just waiting for a chart to pull up here. Oh, come on. Uh, I am going to do it. All right, we got a direct to May. We're going down to 4,000. In just a moment. All right. <laughs> it really irritates me. We're not going to touch them. They were identical. Ugh. <laughs> okay, off Holly uh, to May. Once we get straight, I'm going to slow us. We're going to begin our descent. Holly is three miles. Let's go ahead and do that. Nice and easy. Thousand foot a minute. Off Holly, once we go wings level, we'll begin slowing. We're going to slow to 180 at Holly. I'm not even going to worry about coming off. Okay. So, folks, uh, hope you're enjoying. Uh, this is coming into Gatwick. Let's see what we look like. A lot of clouds. Yeah. A lot of rain to our west. It's still working its way this way. Uh, we're going to shoot the ILS as long as uh, uh, we need till we see the runway. And Holly is now 180. Okay, and now we're direct May. Kind of uh, adjusted here. Uh, but we're making the turn. Almost to 4,000. We're going to go ahead and continue to 2,000. All right. There's 180. Flaps 10. One last check of the METAR. And you're not going to give it to me, are you? That's, oh, there it is. 210, 1023. Of course. Okay, we're now direct May. Field, I believe, is the VOR. And... Okay, the ILS is dialed in. Glide slope localizer will get here in a moment. As soon as we come off May, we're going to click in localizer. Even though I don't see it down here, that always makes me nervous. But it is dialed in here. And again, whoop, 
I hate this. There we go. Fee ref 30, 130. Of course, it's not showing here. Those numbers need to be bigger. If uh, folks from Sparks is watching, make those a little bigger for us would be nice. Same with that. Just a smidge, just enough. This one actually looks blurred. Hang on, I'm going to... Yeah, Core 778 looks blurred as all get out. And we need to go to the middle. Okay, so here comes Mayfield. All right, folks, landing checklist. Actually, we'll go into the approach. We're going to verify that the lights are on. They are. Anti-ice is set. Flaps will are at right now level 10. We'll bring the gear down on the localizer. And uh, auto brakes are set to number three. We'll be able to arm the speed brake a little bit lower. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now she's turning. 2500. 20. Oh, we're in the clouds. ILS, you better come alive here real quick. Oh, we're out of the clouds. Let's see. Airport? I don't see an airport yet. Uh, we're back in the clouds. Okay, folks, that flash, you can turn those off. I know you all think you're not allowed to, but yes, you are. It looks like this may turn into a visual. Yeah, when you're in the clouds and you're getting blinded by the strobes, turn them off, folks. The only good they're doing at that point is blinding you. Bingo. Localizer just came alive. Come on. There Here we go. Approach set. Okay, what are you doing? Besides, really messing with me. You were right the last time, guys. Dang it. I can't tell. That is the most bizarre. There we go. Let's try you again. Okay.
11.4 miles out. Okay. Gatwick traffic, uh, Mac 572 heavy, type 747. Uh, on the localizer, 26 left. Looking for the runway. That the runway there. Okay, got it. Time to slow. Okay, now we have to switch off. Okay, we're gonna hold here till the glide slope starts coming down to us, which it should be doing here real shortly. I think that's the other aircraft. That's the other thing, TCAS on here is not the greatest. K160 set. Now, only bringing them back. Okay, there we go. 160. And Gatwick traffic, uh, Mac gear down. 0572 heavy, fully established gear down, uh, five miles out, ILS 26 left. Okay. Okay, I'm a little distracted here because I thought I heard rain. I don't see it. Okay. Once we clear the runway, I'm going to go shut some windows on the uh, west side of the house. Flaps full. Arm speed brake. Oh, speed brake's up. Get that sucker down. All right, folks, I hate to say this. 1,000. My bird. A little high. Okay, there we are on glide slope again. Let the wind push me over a little. Holding one, four, six. Five hundred. Getting a little under. high, getting a little high. Come on down, big girl. No, you can do it. Three hundred. These lights blow my mind away, and that's why I almost like to auto land at night. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. All right, folks, we're in reverse, idle reverse. 80 knots. 
Almost made that one. We'll definitely make the next one. Auto brakes are disarmed. Well, let's see. Real quick, SIM toolkit. FR. Oh, thank you, Lord, for letting me get that on the ground before the storms. Gatwick traffic, uh, Mac Air 575, clear of runway 26 left at Foxtrot Romeo, crossing 26 right. And the speed brakes didn't deploy, of course. Hit or miss. <laughs> All right, folks, let's... Uh, welcome you to Gatwick. We do have traffic out there. I think it's who I saw on PazCon. Um, let me get these lights doused. And get those strobes if they're still on off. They are off, okay. In the meantime, continuous can go off. Okay, let's run the after landing checklist here real quick. We'll do that in the center. APU door is now open. We'll get that here in a minute. Uh, landing lights are off. Flaps up. Well, not yet. They are now. Speed brakes down. Mac 572 clear of all runways. Taxing to gate. I believe it's 557. Okay. Continuing. Trim. We'll leave it right there in the center. Uh, MCPs reset, EFAS st reset, standby on the transponder. Echo 55 pops. Let's see. I can look at them. That's me. That's me. Doesn't say. Jordan Bravo. All right, nice landing. Nice landing. All right, time to pay attention to where we're going. Uh, I'm looking for a taxiway, Quebec. No, yeah, Quebec. I got a feeling I misread the chart, which that doesn't surprise me today. All right, folks, we are now out of the movement area if the UK does the same as the US. And we are now working our way up to the terminal. Who will yield? 
Not one of them. That's what you get. <laughs> All right. It's nighttime here. And give me a second here. I got to look at some toolkit. We're going to take Romeo up here to Lima and then into our gate. Ah, uh, my laptop decided uh, I didn't touch it enough. It's not ready yet. Uh, come on, laptop. All right, folks, let me just do a quick check here. Quick check. Uh... Oh, you got to be kidding me. Well, folks, that in the background is what we call in the Midwest something to go outside and look at. It's called a tornado warning. Well, we'll just keep taxing. And those of you everywhere else are going, you're nuts. No, this is the Midwest. Folks, I watched a Facebook video that cracked me up and said it exactly the way life is in the Midwest with tornadoes. Everyone else runs for cover, gets into the tornado shelters. We, hey, no, front door, you'll see the tornado that way. <laughs> All right, so... We're going to get this thing into there just in case this thing pisses me off and takes the internet um, before we're done. There's 555. Five. Oh, I chose wisely. We're going to take actually stand 558, I think it's going to be. Let's turn in. And I'll try to be nice to you guys in the... Surprised my phone hasn't said, hey, dummy, there's a tornado. All right, we're in the... It looks like we're on the line I wanted to be. Wish we had active gates. I don't. I know I can get it. I just don't know where yet. All right, folks, we are in the blocks. First step we all know, we got to get that parking brake set. Okay, so let's go into shutdown here. Hang on a second. Oh, you booger. Hang on a second. There we go. Sorry for that, folks. Okay, we are in the blocks. Let's go to standby. All right, parking brake set. Taxi lights all coming off. These were off. Dang it. Oh, well. Oh, they were on. Okay, I had the wrong one I clicked. Uh, clock will reset. And let's get the electrical on the APU. Uh, we can come down now and shut the fuel switches off. They are now off. Passenger signs. Off. Stand by on the transponder fuel pumps. While we're on the APU, we'll just turn the these pumps that I did off. Now, we're going to go to auxiliary on number four and then off on the other three. And anti-ice system is 
And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gatwick. Hang on, I'm gonna, I am gonna get him off channel because he's. Oh, I was on guard. Dang it, I was on the wrong one. Arr. Anyway, all right, folks, uh, we are in the gate. Like I said, we thank you very much for flying with Mike today. Uh, we're gonna kind of stick our nose outside the airplane. And. Like I said, I wish we could bring the gates out and open the doors, but that's the way it is. Um, let me see if just to make sure they're not trying to get a hold of me for some silly reason. Uh, nope, no ATC. Um, so folks, uh, if you liked what you saw, please, by all means, click follow. Um, that lets me know uh, people are liking the content here and the format. Uh, when you click follow, it just gives you the ability to get notified when we uh, start another live stream. So from all of us here at uh, Flying with Mike, we thank you very much. We appreciate each and every one of you that follow us. We got 43 at this point. Love to see that number go way up. But, you know, we're trying to build a community. We have a Discord channel as well. Um, let me bring that over. So if you feel obliged to want to join the community on Discord, there it is for you. But uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off and uh, yeah, go see what this uh, thunderstorm's got going on. Um, but thank you for flying with Mike. God bless. Have a great rest of your Saturday night. Be safe. And we might be flying again tomorrow. So have a good night. God bless.